What's going on agents? Patrick Wolf here. Welcome to another Division 2 build video. Today's build video is going to be a shield pistol combination. This is going to be for PvE. So we're going to go for this right here. We're going to go for the technician. Now, you have to be the technician for this build. Uh, I'm going to, there's a lot of things you guys might learn from this video, so stick around. Uh, there's a lot of things you probably didn't know about the shield and the artificer hive. So I'm going to explain that to you guys in a second. All right, so this is very important. Amped, 50% skill power. That's what we need to be able to balance damage, skill, and skill power. We want as much damage as we can and as much skill power as we can. This gives us a lot of the skill power so we can focus on other elements, more utility. So that's why we're going to go for this. Now, this is very nice. 20% damage to drones, skill proxies, and robotics. So if you guys didn't know, we're going to be using the certain exotic pistol, which is a D50 variant, which gives you a lot of damage for hitting hostile uh, weak points. You're going to get a lot of damage from that. So I'm going to explain all my variations of my, dis my decisions to use certain pieces in a minute. So we have gone for skill damage doesn't really matter there. As long as you guys have got uh, equipping a skill grants 15% bonus armor. When a skill dies, we cover 20% armor. This is also important for the shield because we're going to be getting the shield out quite often and putting it away. It's going to be very tanky. You guys are going to see how much regeneration we have on that shield. It's ridiculous how good you can make the shields right now because of this. This needs to be active. The Artisifer sends out micro electro booster drones that expend themselves to increase allied skills efficiency and refresh their duration. If you guys did not know, this refreshes uh, the whole shield's armor. So the shield, there'll be a bar going from right to left. That's the shield's health, pretty much. It goes down. When it gets to zero or all the way to the left, it, it gets broken. This, every time one of these drones lands on your shield, uh, it, it, pr it refreshes it completely it's an instant active regeneration which makes it so ridiculously strong now the amount of testing i've been doing with this is it's hilarious how well this actually works uh, now if you have a teammate that runs the same hive it can stack so you can continuously get your your shield back you know it can be very important in certain future content like maybe in the raid this could one day become a very viable build because you might need, let's say there's a certain room where there's a bit of trouble and you need, you can't survive. We struggle to survive. Now, like Dragon's Nest, if you guys remember Dragon's Nest, it was a bit tricky because you were in this room at the final boss and it was very difficult to survive everything. We had yet to learn how to use immune stations. This could be a potential game changer or lifesaver in the future. We want to make sure we use 15% uh, sidearm damage, Gunslinger. Make sure this is up. Once you've done that, make sure the technician's fully active. You guys should be doing it by now. Make sure it's fully active. So we get into this build. This build, this is how I would run the build. Remember, guys, this is a template for you guys to work upon. It is my opinion. That is all it is. You can change it however you want. Don't tell me how much better yours is because I make so many builds every, every week, so I can't min-max everything, but I do my best of my ability to make it as good as I can. So we've got 935. The reason why we've got such low stamina is because we actually don't need any stamina whatsoever. You will constantly be tanky like you cannot believe. You'll never actually go down. Your shield will stay up at all times. Unless, if you guys use the shield build in heroic missions, uh, you can't just stand uh, in front of four or five NPCs. You will, your shield will get destroyed very quickly. But this is very strong if you're in a group because obviously if you even if you have three enemies on heroic shooting you you've got a lot of time to kill them and this pistol will be doing half a million damage a shot so you will have no problem it's like a little sniper it's like a a, a tank sniper build um this is uh, well the reason why i call this this is my infinite shield build so the reason why i call it that is because we have got a massive amount of active regeneration and a lot of damage and the shield will never go down because of the artificer hive so i'm going to explain all of that when we get to the skill itself but first of all let's go over all the stats and the pieces two three six k armor don't worry about that you can have for all i care you could have a hundred thousand armor that doesn't matter health it doesn't matter either skill power is vital to have three thousand for your shield or at least what your best mods have if you guys have if your best shield mod is 2700 that's what you need don't overdo it don't underdo it so the first piece we're going to go over, this is my go-to for any kind of primary, uh, the Pyromaniac, one of my favorite guns. It is my favorite gun in the game. If you guys don't know how to get it, I got it from a loot box in the dark zone. You just farm assault rifles as much as you can. Hopefully you'll get lucky. Perfectly ignited, 40% weapon damage to burning enemies. This actually sets enemies on fire all the time. So we've got a Lego double duty. Uh, as you can see, we don't have the BTSU gloves. That's for a reason because we're using the Gunslinger holster, but we're going to get into that. 
I just use whatever gun secondary, guys, doesn't matter. We're going to be using the pistol, so you can use whatever gives you the best holster talents. So th this is not a holster talent, but it just depends which, what you want to use. So it's up to you guys. Don't worry about it. It's not too, it's not too serious. Your shield will always be up anyway. It's not really a big deal. I use this because if I want to be in cover for any kind of difficult section of a mission, you know, this is a very good gun. It does a lot of damage, even if you don't stack into uh, marksman rifle damage. We do have nine firearms, so we are hitting pretty hard. All right, so this is what we're going to be using, guys. This is the main uh, firing power of this build. Now, the Gunslinger holster gives you a 20% damage increase with revolvers. If you guys want to use the revolver, I would go for the Dicerus. Uh, it gives you a very high amount of damage, good RPM, and a decent mag size. But I've gone to... Well, I'm going for this because of many reasons. 100% uh, damage to hostile electronics. So you actually see enemies weak pointed. Sorry, they're weak points because they are highlighted. They're very easy to see. You one-shot any hostile electronics. Not only does that almost kill them, but then... Um, after destroying an enemy's weak point or hostile electronics, your next bullet deals 500% weapon damage. If that shot kills an enemy, your magazine is refilled and grants plus 100% weapon damage for the entire magazine. Switching weapons removes the buff. It's unbelievable. The utility is crazy strong. While holster destroying enemy weak points, refills 20% of your current weapons magazine. It's very, very good and we can't pass it up. Don't worry about that 20% damage. As you guys can see, 500% really just completely obliterates that, so that's why we are not using a revolver for this build, even though the Gunslinger requires that. We still get the other buffs though. So, with the pieces, you need to have two RNKs, so that is going to be the main part of it, because we actually get hazard protection and pistol damage. Two of the most important things in this build, because you are very squishy, and you are susceptible to fire grenades and all that, so the shield will tank a lot of it, but it won't, you know, you can still burn and it can do a lot of damage. So hazard protection helps. Pistol damage, that's a lot. 20% is a big chunk, so we need that two-piece. Damage to elite skill power. Mine's not min-maxed, but that's what you want to go for. Skill power, damage to elites. The surge, 20% skill haste to get your shield back if it does go down as quick as possible. This is my juicy chest piece. I'm sure you guys know about this one I showed you previously. 21% headshot damage and 1,000 skill power with insulated. Why insulated? Why not nothing else? Why not unstoppable force? There's reasons for that. Insulated is one of my favorite talents, guys. It's extremely vital. We are getting 40% hazard protection just from the mask and this. That gives us the survivability of getting hit by... Well, if you get hit by grenades, any kind of status effects in the PvE content, you will survive it because you are tanky and the shield doesn't really do too well against that so this mitigates all of that damage so it is quite important to stack hazard protection you can use the hollow man mask if you do have it get a hundred percent hazard protection but make sure you put rnk two piece on anywhere else in your build without sacrificing the holster the gloves or the backpack because those are very important so probably the knee pads i'd go for the knee pads if you guys can find a decent pair so whenever you mod any of these items, we're just going to go for the basics, whatever best armor, health rolls you have. Rather go for health if you can, guys. Uh, I've got a lot of health rolls. There's got a nice mod here that gives me a bit of health. Optimal range, headshot damage, weapon damage, and pistol damage are what you want. Optimal range is not really important because the gunslinger gives us, but it does help when it's not procced if you're not going to use it because there's another holster you can use, which I'm going to show you guys in a second. Headshot damage is what we need. Uh... Now this is interesting here, before we get into this gunslinger holster, it's not showing it's active because I'm not actually holding the pistol. So don't worry, it will be active. Uh, let me try this quickly, there we go. As you can see, it's active. Dodge City Gunslinger's holster. Okay, well it's gone off again, thanks game. Uh, I actually want to mention something guys. Do, I, do you guys have the same frustration when you're trying to mod your knee pads and the guy shakes his leg? And, you, and especially on PC, I don't know if console players have the same problem. You're trying to click on his knee, on his knees and you can't because it's moving around. It, it, it's irritating, but anyways. Uh, so we get accuracy, stability, reload speed, optimal range. Revolver damage, we've sacrificed it for obvious reasons. So it's up to you. You can use a revolver if you want to. Uh, quick draw is nice. Uh, perforator is awesome. It gives us uh, pistol headshot kills, give us another 20% weapon damage and allows your primary and second weapons to penetrate enemies for 8 seconds. So very nice. This holster is, you can acquire it by doing certain missions and stuff like that. I'm sure you guys know how to do it by now. I'm sure everyone's got it. I'm sure I put out a tutorial at one stage. If you don't know, it's everywhere on the internet. Now, let's explain something else to you guys right over here. If you don't have this holster, this is what you guys are going to go for. Perfect bloodlust. 
every time you pull out your shield, it counts as a weapon swap because you're going from your primary to your pistol. So you'll get 20% weapon damage by just swapping to your pistol every time you pull out your shield. It also works when your shield gets thrown away and you get your primary out. So this is what I would be running if I didn't have the Dodge City Gunslinger's holster. Backpack, another RNK because we want that 20% pistol damage. Armor, crit chance, weapon damage, it doesn't matter, whatever the best you have. Efficient, my go-to for any kind of content in this game because you have a lot of armor kits because healing is very difficult in this game. You, won't, you, would, you can't heal yourself with your skills because you're using other important elements. So make sure to have this, hard hitting, you know, that speaks for itself, more damage to enemies. Modded, like I said before, explosive resistance is very nice as well. That is a beautiful mod. It looks juicy there. Explosive resistance, 3% total armor, and 5.8k armor. Mo uh, gloves, I've gone for the uh, Providence Defense to give me that little boost so I can get my mods active. I've got 11% pistol damage with precise. Best in slot for headshot damage. Then 511, just to give me a little bit more protection from elites. 301 skill power with destructive. Uh, I can reroll this again. I don't know what I'm going to put. Uh, to be honest, guys, I'd probably go for empowered. I don't have the right pieces right now, but it's not really important for this build. If you want to really min max this build and get it a bit better, probably go for empowered if your skill powers are getting a bit weaker uh, because there's not a lot of options there. So it depends what you guys want to roll. You decide. Uh, this could be useful for any matter of reasons uh, because uh, what I was doing was my idea was destructive I think it actually worked but it's very difficult to tell because it's not very specific it doesn't really it's very difficult to hit a hostile electronics and see the damage consistently but when you destroy enemies electronics to get that 500% weapon damage from your pistol it actually blows them up a bit more so they actually take more damage when you run this that's what I've been finding I don't know if that's true but that's why I like to keep destructive on because it just it's an all round good all round good talent to have on any kind of build because you will be surprised how often you blow things up in this game especially when you're shooting electronics uh, hostile electronic their weak points and all that stuff so it just depends how you look at it but you can put whatever you want in the knee pads that's why I said before Maybe go for the Hollow Man mask and change it for an RNK knee pads. It's up to you guys. You guys can go mad with this build. But this that's pretty much the idea. You get the idea. That's the important thing. And then you guys know how to use it and what to do. All right, guys. Before we get into skills, we're going to go through the stats quickly just to get it through. Get it over and done with. It's not too much important right now because you know I've shown you exactly what you need to do. Headshot damage, that's what we want to go for. Headshot damage is the most important thing. Don't worry about weapon damage at all. Obviously, more the better, but headshot's what you want. That's very high for a pistol, for an assault rifle because it's showing the assault rifle. So uh, if I could just quickly do that quickly. That's very nice. There we go. Pistol. Lovely. So I'm glad they added that. 140% headshot damage for a pistol is insane. We have also almost got 20% crit chance. Accuracy is very important. We get that from a certain piece that we're running as well. Uh, I think it's a chest piece. That makes a big difference, especially because it's not easy to hit shots with this gun from range. And the reticle is very strange. But um, yeah, 35% stability, not important. That's only really important for rifles. Uh, we do have 10% uh, all weapons. Pistol is 46%. That's not bad. Over here, all the things are active. Chest piece, all the holdings. That's where we get our accuracy. That's actually quite important, especially if you're on console. I wouldn't overlook that. Hazard protection, 40%. That's vital for us to survive any kind of uh, explosions. Uh, not explosions, sorry, guys. Um, Just quickly, just a quick note. The power build I released the other day, uh, people get confused. They say if you have 100% immunity to fire damage, you don't take damage. Guys, the, the igniter chem launcher that shoots the fire bombs, that's explosive damage. It's not fire damage. So you take explosive damage. That's why it's so hard for people to actually mitigate it. Yes, I know you can stack explosive damage, but it's not that easy. So remember that, guys. If you're immune, you don't get put on fire, so you don't get the damage from the gun, but you still take damage from explosives. So hazard protection, very important for this build as well. It helps you a lot. Hive, we do have 20% skill hates. It's not great, but you will always have it up, which is nice. 40% uh, buffs, very nice. Repair amounts off 100%. 60 for allies. Charges, 17. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, the way we're going to play with this is very interesting. So we've got 20% skill as with this. Active regeneration, 63,000. I don't know if you guys understand how high this is. I'm going to show you now. This is where the, the build gets really interesting is when I go into the, the details because that is ridiculous. Guys, The I don't know if you watch the gameplay uh, that I show you. I could do some more if you guys want, but 
it regens. You can watch it just going up very quickly. It's insane. That's why active regeneration is a lot more important. Okay, let's go over the skills. The Artisifer Hive is insane for this. You have to run this. You never have to throw this down. While it's on your back, the hives actually jump to your shield when you have your shield out by themselves. So you will be getting a massive buff. This will constantly refresh your shield at all times. That's why I've gone for buff duration. Buff dura duration is the most important thing in charges. Don't worry about anything else. Make sure to have that on you because it, it procs your, your shield at all times. Here we go, boys. This is where it gets interesting. 79% active regeneration. 87% health and 87% active regeneration. Those That is the most important stat in this build. Health and active regeneration. Stack that as much as you can. I have 944,000 health. I can get this to just over 2 million. That's not what you want. You want to balance it. You can either put two health, but make sure to put at least one active regeneration because that is how you make this build or this shield become invincible and last forever. Uh, it's an infinite shield build, and it really is because of active regeneration. You can face tank anything. Your shield, if you just move into cover for a few seconds, you get your shield back from the hive and just the active regeneration itself. It's really effective with all the extra damage we get from the pistol. It's fun to use, extremely potent, and this is my infinite shield build. I hope you guys did enjoy this build video. I'm sorry it was a bit long, but I needed to explain to you just like all the elements so everyone kind of gets an idea. So make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Division 2 content, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Peace out, boys.